Everybody, please can you hear me? Please can you leave a comment if you can hear? Thanks, mom. Thank you, Punta. That's my big brother. Thank you. That's an interesting to try to a dream. Hi, my namesake, to try Okay, welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome to another episode of Kingdom Culture Conversations. I'm so glad to have everybody join us today. My name is Abiola Dave. If this is your first time of watching me or seeing my face, my beautiful face, of course. <laughs> yes, we've got filter to help us with our lights, but yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, you can call me Abiola by Grace or your progressive grand partner. That's fine. That's good. And we have an interesting topic today and a special guest. I'm waiting for a special guest to join us um, after salvation. Let me just pin our topic. Yes. So we have a guest. Um, we have a guest joining us today, special guest joining us today. And um, I'm going to introduce the topic once it's here. I'm going to talk about why we are doing the topic. And um, I don't know if you've seen the post, if you saw the post, the caption I had on this post where I believe as a daughter of God that I am, I'm not a pastor, I'm not a deaconess, I'm not a whatever, a bishop. <laughs> But as a child of God and a Christian, a girl that seeks after the Lord's heart, I know and I believe that the uh, the body of Christ is in a place of correction here. Uh, we're in a season of correction. We're in a season of equipping because we need to be equipped. And um, I can remember how the Lord was pressing that on me even in August when we had our reset. And the Lord said so many things, of course. And um, one of the things he highlighted was, you know, um, broken people cannot go fix other broken, uh, broken people cannot fix the broken world, right? He needs to build us, he needs to heal us in order for him to use us. And um, for me, I believe it's so essential because um, where, where do people get broken from or what really causes the uh, brokenness or the hurts and the... Um, the arts, the pain, the disappointment. It comes from maybe unhealthy expectations. It comes from most especially dysfunctional backgrounds, dysfunctional um, foundation. You know, um, in this, in the body of Christ, there have been things we've been taught, you know, when you get saved, this and that will happen. Then Jesus is this, then that and that. But I believe like there's so many things we go wrong or there are so many things we're getting wrong. And that's the reason why the Lord has sent his apostles, which... I hope he's going to be joining us soon to teach us, to explain to us, to educate us on some of these things. Um, it's just, it's going to be joining us in like two minutes and, um, and then we'll get started. 
So I believe this is very vital to the body of Christ because of the season we're in. We cannot keep doing the same things the same way and expect the same a different results, you know. And like I emphasized here as well during our um, reset um, was one thing that kept coming to mind. How many of we Christians didn't really submit totally to the way of the Lord until we were in our early 20s or late teens compared to other religions where, you know, right from the start, they are indoctrinated into their belief system. So there is need for that shift. There is need for that change. And, um, and I'm looking forward to this conversation as well. We'll have times, we have a moment for questions and answers for Apostle to answer some questions we may have as well. Once he jumps on here, I'll talk a bit about him. And for as many people will be joining us for the first time, watching me for the first time as well, I will introduce myself again to everybody once he jumps on here. In the meantime, let's enjoy this song. It's not just a song actually, it's a sound. Sound. There's a difference between a, a sound and a song. Let's soak in this sound because in as much as we are two people having this conversation, there's the third person, third person in Trinity. And he's only the one who has gone ahead of us before this and is here with us. And so we know that it's beyond a conversation here. And our guest speaker was actually the one who sang this, who released the sound. <laughs> Welcome everybody. Welcome everyone. So we're talking about what's next after salvation. We know people say it's um transformation and then empowerment, but how? How? He's going to be joining us in a bit. So he's here, <laughs> he's here, and we're thinking. Okay, yes, yeah, so he's sending me a request now. Hi. There you are. Good yeah, we have, and the Holy Ghost is here <laughs> with us. That's what we are jamming to. Let's go. Good afternoon. Yeah, Good afternoon. So How are you? Here. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So um, I was just telling people about you, a little about you, which sure. I'll continue very soon. And I, I spoke a bit about why we're discussing this topic, you know, how it is necessary and i believe and i told him i'm not a pastor i'm not a preacher i'm not yeah. a deaconess or anything i'm just a girl that really loves the lord mm -hmm. and i sense that this is a season of correction for the body of christ mm -hmm. you know and that's why you apostles are mm -hmm. here let me not go too ahead of myself i need to introduce our guest first sure so everybody please join me in welcoming apostle pastor kofi Date. thank you so much for being here you know pk we call him pk as well mm -hmm. and funny enough someone who someone who said uh, someone who said he knows you or she knows you said um they thought the pk was preacher's <laughs> and i'm like no it's pastor kofi 
<laughs> because of course you're pretty as well of but course. it's pastor kofi yeah so pastor kofi here is the lead pastor of campus rush global yes and campus rush global is one of the youth expression of tlc yeah. transforming life center my church yeah, yeah you are awesome. at my church <laughs> you better rest and um is an apostle is a pastor obviously is a worshiper somebody scream worshiper you need to see pastor kofi on the bus guitar <laughs> he travels in worship Praise and because i'm a born worshiper myself it's like oh my lord this is this is so beautiful <laughs> and um i thank you for what you're doing in the body of christ because i see how you travel in in worship and i see how you travel even to minister yeah you know at this young age my goodness yeah. we gotta talk <laughs> to ourselves great. and our kids <laughs> and so thank you so much for being here with us thank you so uh -huh. much uh -huh. and um to as many people who are probably seeing me for the first time as well my name is abiola dayfair you can call me abiola by grace or your progressive grand partner because i'm all about being a work in progress not as an excuse but as Proverbs 4, 18 says, that we shine brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Yeah. You know, and I'm also a worshiper. I'm a writer. I'm a songwriter. The Lord has released this through us for the kids. Wow. It's a song, sound book for the kids. They can play and listen, you know, yeah. and the Lord is doing great and mighty things through us yeah. in our own corner. <laughs> and we keep advancing. So over to you, PK. Please tell us more about yeah. you. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much again uh for having me here today so honored um it's a blessing to be here um I, well obviously when you had reached out that definitely this is something that i would definitely have to do something i definitely would want to do so i'm honored thank you so much um so i think you've said it all i <laughs> to be to be real i'm just a young man i love the lord um i love just you know, making God proud and doing it through worship, doing it through the word, doing it through whatever means that God would allow us to do so. So, um, you know, um, when it comes to either music or the word or leadership or whatever have you, um, I'm just a servant. I'm a tool in God's hands and he uses me however way he wants. And so, yeah, I pastor here in Ottawa. We travel uh, and go around and minister different places and go and bless different communities. And, you know, we're just here and we love the Lord. That's yeah. All. Yes, and to as many people who are watching you for the first time who are single, he's taking guys, he's engaged. Uh, yeah. Because, you know, when, when people start, uh, especially for um, singles, yeah. I remember when I was single as well, when you're listening to them introduce either a guy or a lady, you're there ticking the checklist. You're like, okay, yes, this is this, yes, is that, yes, is that. But he's taking, and you know, he's like, to a friend of mine, thank God. You know, shout out to you, Eddie. We love you. <laughs> so now to our topic. I don't want to take too much of your time. You're a busy oh. guy. <laughs> so after salvation, mm -hmm. what next? Yeah. I ask this because, yeah, we hear people say, you know, after salvation, there's the transformation and you're empowered. But we need to know how. Mm -hmm. And also because, uh, you know, many have had unhealthy expectations without being ready. You know, when we give our lives to Christ, or rather, when we come, when they tell us to accept the Lord as our Savior, when you mm. say the salvation prayer, people mm. forget that that particular day, what we are actually doing is to accept the Lord who has been panting after us, mm. is to accept and receive him. Mm. So it's mm. not re really on that day you give your life to Christ because you are still who you are, but you accept him. So after that day, then you give your life to Christ, technically. Everything you do after that day will really show if you've truly surrendered. Mm -hmm. But people need to know how. So you're here to teach us how, Apostle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I think that's a loaded question. And, and thank you so much. I think it's a necessary question. I think it's definitely a loaded question. Um, for me, anyways, um, after salvation, um, it's important that we get into community. Um, I feel as though, very importantly, that community is one of the greatest ways that we are able to establish ourselves because within the Bible says that within the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Yes. So when we get into the place where there's strong community, strong leadership, we then can begin our process of what we call discipleship. Yes. Now, 
that after after salvation comes discipleship, consolidation of discipleship. Those are two things um, that are necessary. You have to disciple, you have to consolidate who you have discipled before we send you forth into wherever God has called you to do. Very important and necessary that you don't jump from salvation to being sent forth. Yes. Uh, as you said, you can receive Jesus in your heart. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord, you are saved. And so saying the prayer is when you, like you said, you receive Christ, but you also have to, in, if I can say so in a different manner, you have to allow the Egypt to leave you as you have left. Egypt, you know what I mean? You can't, you've left Egypt, but Egypt still has to leave you, has to come out of you. And so in order to do so, it's important that we get into community that would allow us to be discipled, to be consolidated. I definitely can go into details um, as, as we go along tonight. But those are like the foundational things for me anyways. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the other question I had then is, when you now come into the community, yeah. Yeah. Um, you've been a member. Mm -hmm. and you're a leader so mm -hmm. you'll be able to answer this question and do justice to it it's really good mm -hmm. so how do we help um you know members to grow on that personal journey what are the things to do what are the things what are the ways to help them grow personally where they are not just uh carried away by the religious routines or religion you know we talk about religious spirits you know so how what are the things to do yeah so I think um, first things first to me is that it's very easy um, when you come into a community setting to fall into, like you're saying, the religious activities or the religious routines. Um, but that's why it's important to get into a community that is exposing you to relationship and not religion. The relationship with the Lord is, uh, for me, something that supersedes religious routines. Relationship with the Lord is going to expose your heart. It's going to expose your whole being to walking with Christ. Um, walking with Christ is a journey. And to walk with Christ, you have to understand that you will be times where you will, you will be walking, times where you'll be flying, times where you'll be running, times yeah. where you'll be falling. Yeah. Times where you be rolling, like it's not a straight, it's not a straight path. Neither is it a straight journey. It's a journey that you know. It's a yes, journey. Yes, the journey yes. doesn't have to be linear, but you just have to progress. So, like my friend would say, that it's progression over perfection. In <laughs> other words, your ability to literally just get on the journey, yes. get on the path, and continually walk through that path, irrespective of how long it takes you. It's your ability to diligent to that path so when you get into these communities to develop yourself i would say personally um without the the um the influence of leadership would be difficult but it's possible now i understand the question or i understand the reason maybe why this question is coming this way is because a lot of times leaders might want to make themselves or want members to be dependent on them mm -hmm. for them to especially for aspiring leaders you know yes Yes, ex exactly, especially for aspiring leaders. However, it, there is a place where you would need um, the tutelage of a leader to prepare and give you the blueprint yeah. of how you can develop your walk. I remember when I was younger, my dad uh, got me like this devotional and it was like this, you know, 21 day devotional thing that we used to do. And in that devotional it was from Bogota and um, in that devotional it had, you know, what was your what was the logos today what was the rhema today what was uh communication or was it community yeah what was what was what was communication and what was application something like that yeah. and so every day we would read the devotional and we would have to write down what was the logos word what was the rhema word what is god communicating to you and what how are you going to apply this in your life and we had to do that every day like we used to write down some days we'd miss it some days we'd catch it but again it's progression over perfection so Every day I would try, but the thing is, my dad gave me the tools to develop my relationship. And one of the tools to develop my relationship was to have a specific time of devotion where I can be discipled by God. But the way that I can be discipled is when my discipler or my leader would prepare and give me the adequate tools to develop my own walk myself. So by books, by devotional materials. And every day, this is how he would do it. He would come and he would check in with me. And he would say, what was the rhema word today? What was the logos today? What's your communication? What's your application? You know. And so when he did that, what he was doing is he was working out 
my salvation. He was helping Ooh. me to work out my salvation. The Bible says we should personally work out our salvations with fear and trembling. But I do also believe that there is a blueprint, that there should be leaders that are helping us at the foundational stages to help us work out that salvation. Give us a blueprint because we may not know how to walk this walk. We don't know that we don't know the journey. We don't know the path. So we need leaders to help us walk this I walk. I walked the walk already. So they Thank can. You. Yes, yes. Wow. Absolutely. Wow. That's beautiful. Absolutely. Um, you spoke a bit about the progression. Mm -hmm. You know, let's address someone, a young person yeah. out there who is like, you know, I'm trying, you know, I got saved and, you know, I go to church regularly and, you know, I've been trying to keep up with my devotions and some days I'm just there, some days I'm not, you know. How? What has helped you in your own journey in, um, you know, as you transitioned, you know? What has helped you? Yeah, I think for me, um, what has helped me is I've, I've decided to make my, my devotional times, my times connecting with the Lord, um, very exciting. Like I tried to make it exciting. So for me, um, I endeavor to, I want to be excited to pray. I want to be excited to be, to read my word. I don't want to read my word to minister. I want to read my word to be right. So a lot of times I'm not, I'm not. I'm not I'm not reading the word or preaching or rather reading the word or or praying or worshiping to to go out there and to preach but I'm doing it to feed on myself right so for me I've made my my walk exciting so I would say for a young person that's out there um find out what is exciting for you and surround your prayer life your word life your devotional life around those things for you for example if it's getting a new version of the bible that is more applicable to you or getting a version of the bible that is more you know that is more palatable or you can just digest it better then get a better version get an easier version there's a tpt there's the esv there's the nlt there's the msg like get something that is easier for you that makes it more exciting around your prayer time get a different prayer uh playlist um, maybe get some different music that's going to encourage you to pray. Um, there's some hour long prayer sessions on YouTube. You can go along and pray with them. There's, um, you can join a prayer group. There's different prayer sessions you can join. You can pray with somebody. Like there's so much you can do to make what you do, your foundational, um, things that you do very, very, very exciting. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you continually grow in that. So that's, what's worked for me to keep these things. And I've realized one thing that. It's not every day that you'll get it right. It's not every day that you'd want to Ooh, do it. I better um, it now. <laughs> it, it, it's not, not every day. Like, I, it's not every day. And I don't think, like, I don't think as pastors or as leaders, it makes it any different. Like, there's some days you wake up and you're tired. There's some days you wake up and you don't want to. There's some days you wake up and you don't want to preach or you don't want to read your word or you don't want to pray or whatever the case may be. But you have to understand that it is not about perfection. Like, it's not about me, you know, ticking off this things every day but it's a relationship which means that it is a progressive walk you just have to continually walk towards that mark even if it means you fall off the day you get up tomorrow you fall off, like you just have to continually walk this walk so um having grace uh for yourself having grace for your walk not abusing grace to the point whereby you are not working or not doing what you have to do but understanding that this is a walk it's a journey and just continually walking that journey out. That's all. Yeah. Very simple. I, I loved how you emphasized community at the beginning because our community are also our friends. Okay, we've got a question here. We can go to that um, before. Mm -hmm. uh, it says, talking about the importance of joining a church, how can new believers find the right congregation for them? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Um, you want to find a church that is Bible believing. You want to find a church that um, believes in the word, that's Bible believing, that is focused on Jesus, um, a church that has a good discipleship program, um, a church that will help you, that has smaller groups. Um, so either they have small groups, they have life groups, something that you can easily plug in that will help you um, grow from a small group into a larger, um, you know, a larger church organization. So those are a few things. A church that's Bible believing, a church that loves Jesus, a church that focuses on Jesus, a church that has a great discipleship program, a church that has great small groups. Those things will help you. Um, and a church where the pastor is submitted. 
to somebody else. That's very important as well, because you don't want to be under somebody who's not under somebody. At that point, you don't have any, there's no correction, there's no accountability. So you want to have a leader who's submitted to another leader. That's very important as well. Oh, um, thank you so much for that. There's another one here. I think you touched a bit on it. It says, how can one establish a consistent and meaningful prayer life? Yeah, so it's easy. Start with um, consistency begins with just simply starting. So starting. if you're doing five minutes a day, like it's very simple. If you do five minutes a day, do five minutes a day. Uh, if you're doing 10 minutes a day, do 10 minutes a day. You want to progress in that. You want to get, you want to go longer. You want to get better each time. Prayer is not simply about the length. It's about the consistency. Yeah. Not about how long you pray to start. It's about how consistent you are with your prayer life. So if you pray five minutes, as long as you pray five minutes, you're doing that every single day. I believe that that does such great damage in the kingdom of hell. And so it does such good for you rather than paying, praying one hour once a week, you know? So if you are praying five minutes every single day, and maybe that moves into 15 minutes, then moves to 20 minutes, you just want to progress in that. That's how you can keep it consistent. Start. The only way you can keep it consistent is to start. Start with whatever you can. If it's an hour, if it's 15 minutes a day, do 15 minutes. If it's five minutes, do five minutes and keep that consistent. Find the time that works for you. And if it's midnight, if it's midday, if it's early morning, if it's mid afternoon, whatever it is, find that time, stick with that time and pray at that time. And if it's five minutes, five minutes, if it's 10 minutes, 10 minutes, but it's consistent. And within that, you just continue to grow within that. I think those are great foundational steps that can help you in your prayer life. Yeah, that's, that's so true. And, and to add to what you said about the starting is even when you start and you think, you know, you went three days off, go again and start again, you know, just keep going. Yeah. Don't just take it. Oh, well, I didn't pray for three days and that's it. No, you start all over again. Russia. So much, mm -hmm. Yes. So in your experience, what have you found to be the most fulfilling aspect of a life following salvation? Mm -hmm. And how can new believers experience such fulfillment as well? Mm. So, I think fulfillment is, is what? Is, is, is knowing that your old man is dead and that your new man has arrived. And you know, uh, be, you know, old things have passed away, you know, and um, um, you're born again. I think the joy of salvation is the truth of, of what I've experienced, is the joy of knowing that I'm no longer bound by my old man, and that I've moved into a new nature. I'm a born, I'm a new creature in Christ. And knowing that you're a new creature, you're a new person, you are, yeah, you are, you, you have joy unspeakable. And I think like those things are things that, um, what what give you that fulfillment the fulfillment for me is the joy of salvation period knowing that i am no longer who i used to be and that i have eternal life and that i know where i'm going once i leave this world that transition into eternal life like i have a secure spot in eternal life like i think that that's the joy that's the fulfillment yeah the joy the, the life pleasing unto god yeah. right yeah simple simple yeah very There's simple says, is there a specific piece of scripture or Bible story that you find particularly inspiring or helpful for individuals looking to grow after salvation? Yeah, Acts chapter 2, 42, 41, 42. The Bible says, and I'm teaching about it in church. The Bible says in the early church that after Peter had converted about 3,000 men, not including women and children, uh, right after uh, the Pentecost and the day of Pentecost, the Bible says that they brought themselves to uh, four things to the breaking of bread to discipleship to uh, giving themselves to doctrine and to prayer those four things are foundational things that the early church um, has taken on and so i believe that those are things that i'm teaching my church right now oh. on how to do it so we jump on campus rush global on youtube yes you'll get some messages as well thank you so much no Mike. problem no. much so it says, there's a question here. It says, how do you navigate leaving an old life behind mm -hmm. in order to progress into what God has called you? Mm -hmm. Leaving behind relationships and habits that don't benefit you. you know, I was actually going to ask about the friendships as well. So this question covers it. Yeah, I think um, for me, a lot of people, what they do is that they burn their bridges. Um, when they get into this new life, they completely burn everything, burn CDs, burn relationships, burn whatever. Now, I don't think necessarily that is absolutely 
always necessary. I think sometimes it, are, it is very necessary, yeah. but I don't think it's always necessary. I think that there are moments where um, you can move into this new man, this new position, this new place in God and keep the bridge open so that you can also um, mm -hmm. minister to those people and bring them over that bridge to where you are. Now, um, I have friends who are non-believers. I have friends who don't believe in Jesus, I've, but I've, I've also witnessed to them. You know, I have friends, not all, of, most of my friends now are, are, are believers, but I still have, you know, some, some people here and there who are non-believers who know what I do, who know um, what I'm about and they respect what I do. And we still have a relationship and a friendship that doesn't necessarily talk about um, my faith but they help me in different aspects. And so I think that there are, there's always, and I preached about a couple weeks ago, there's good in every relationship and you have to be able to maximize the good, you know, and know that uh, you have to be the one impacting them and not them impacting you when it comes to faith in that type of aspect. So what do you do? Um, of course, one thing that does help you is to surround yourself with good company, you know, good company. Um, if you have bad company, as the Bible says, it corrupts, you know, good morals. So it's important for you to have good company. It's important for you to be able to surround yourself with community, with people who love Jesus. And you get that through going to church or finding a good, you know, Bible-believing community where you can plug in. That's why I said it before, joining small groups, you know, serving in ministry, that stuff helps you develop a community of believers, of friends who will help you grow in your walk with God. You want to find a community where in that community, you pray the least, you yeah. read your word the least, <laughs> you are not the deepest, you are not the most revelatory. You want to find a community of from them it, as well. who are further than you are so that their prayer yeah. life will challenge you. When they say, let's go and pray, you're thinking you're going to pray for an hour. Yeah, on, on their mind, they're trying to pray for three hours. What the, does that pushes you in the place of intimacy? So you need to be able to find a community who is way further than you are to help you grow in that. While still doing that, you can still keep some of these bridges open. Now, sometimes you'll keep the bridge open and some people will never cross that bridge and that's okay. As long as you are not where you used to be and you are not also maybe where you want to be, but you're definitely not where you used to be, you've crossed over to the bridge. Yeah. You have that ability to bring people over should they need to, but you're already on a different side of Jordan. And that's what's important. Continue progressing. Yo, yo, that's it. Thank you so much, BK. Thank you so much. I think we answered all the questions on there already. And you touched on the question I had about the friendships, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so um, if there are more questions, please feel free to drop your questions um yeah yes no questions no questions okay so yeah no questions here thank you so much for highlighting the community um because okay there's something here could you provide guidance on living a life that reflects christian values and principles especially when facing ethical or moral dilemma at work mm. That's a great question. I know that I have the full answer to that. I'll give what I have. Um, the Bible says that we are in the world, but not of the world. Romans 12 talks about it, says that um, we should allow our minds to be renewed mm -hmm. um, and not be conformed, but we should be renewed in our thinking. When I think about that scripture, Romans 12 too, what I think about simply is the fact that when we spend time with God, when we spend time in his word, the Bible says in John chapter one, um, I don't want to preach today, but you know, they're pulling out all the scriptures out of me. Uh, they're, they're trying to go deep. Yeah, they want to go deeply, uh, deeply theological today. Okay. All right, let's go there. <laughs> when, I'm just I'm on Tuesdays, my Wednesdays, my day off. But you know, let me go to when you go to John chapter one. The Bible says, "I love you too, Jonathan. I love you." The Bible says that in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. So understand that when you take in the Word, you are taking in God. You are reflecting God. The more of the God you take in, the more of God, the more of the Word you take in, the more of God you're taking in. That's why the Bible says, thy word have I hidden in my heart. David would say that. That's why the Bible also said that we should enjoy the washing of the Word. So when we engage in the Word of God, what that does is that that transforms our mind. It transforms our spirits to be more Christ-like. 
to be more like Christ. What we take in his word, we are transformed to be like Christ. Now, when we go to the workplace, what we're doing is everything we say, every way that we communicate is a reflection of what we've inputted. The Bible, not the Bible, my dad says this all the time. My dad says, he said it so much that I even think it's in the Bible, but it's not in the Bible, so don't quote me. But my dad says it all the time. He says, garbage in, garbage out. He said, word in, word out. You will output whatever you intake. And so if you are taking in so much of the word, if you are taking in so much of God, what will happen is your answers will reflect the word. <laughs> your decisions will reflect the word. Your understanding will reflect the word. Everything you're doing is going to reflect the word. That's how it yeah. is. And so if you are if you are at the workplace and someone's coming at you, you know, left or someone's coming at you twisted or whatever the case is, your responses will begin to change in as much as you take more of God in. Now, I'm not saying that you won't have a humanly reaction. We're definitely human. We're not robots. We're going to be human. You will have a reaction. You may feel emotional. You may feel attacked or whatever the case is. However, you will find that the more of God you take in, the more conformed you are to the Lord, you begin to realize that your responses are less like your responses and more like God's responses. Yeah. And so when you do that, you will have what we call uh, the fruit of the spirit. The Bible talks about it. talks about uh, love, patience, suffering, long suffering. talks about um, self-control. One of the fruits of the spirit being self-control is one of those fruits of the spirit that we get and we enjoy that it helps us in moments of great contention or moments where we are feeling attacked, in moments where we're feeling like this person's coming at me left and whatever the case is. When you take in the word and then when you also are endowed or receive the fruit of the spirit, not just the gifts of the spirit, but the fruits of the spirit, when you receive the Holy Spirit, what begins to happen is when someone comes at you left, you have that gift of self or that fruit of self-control. Yeah. That if they're coming at you and they're like doing all types of craziness at you, you have that self-control to remain calm, to remain peaceful, and to respond in a way that will literally represent what is on the inside of you. And that's Christ. So I hope that helps somebody. Yes, and that, that's really how we grow, you know, when we are tested with the fruits of the spirit. Absolutely. Because if you if you say you're a Christian and you have love, of course you'll be tested with hatred and they will see your response. <laughs> we'll yes. See how respond yeah. is it in love or do you really have the love you're saying you claim to have absolutely so that's it thank you so much pk no problem. Last for today please pk gotta go <laughs> um that's no problem last question for today what do you do when your parents want you to do a specific career but you're not passionate about it and want to do something else what is the christian response to this dilemma <laughs> And there's no, there's no right or wrong answer to this one. Exactly. Every parent is different. Every family is different. Yeah. I can't Did they hear from, from God? Did your parents hear from God? You know, that's different. You know, we don't know. Is it just because the world is doing it? They've got their friends' kids doing it. So it depends, actually. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you've answered it. I think it is simple. It is um, not every answer. I can't give you an answer because every family is different. Some parents may feel like this is, like you're saying, my, my kids, my my friend's kids are doing this and they're all engineers. You have to go do engineering, but you don't like engineering, but they want you to do engineering because they know that you will be set up. You will have a job. You'll have a, whatever. Everything is, is set up for you. You have to know within yourself if this is something that you feel like the Lord's calling you to. And if you obviously know that your parents have also heard God about this, but if you feel strongly about it, it's important. You can even go and get external counsel. We can go and talk to somebody else, maybe a leader or an elder that they respect and go to talk to them and express your, your dilemma. And when you express those type of feelings, they can also give you the wisdom and they can even speak to your parents about it and say, hey, you know, he's come to talk to me. He really, really does not want to do this. Is there anything that we can do about it? So sometimes going to elders, going to other leaders can give you the insight to, in, to the ear that your parents are maybe not trying to give you. They'll give somebody else that they highly respect, um, you know, from that different angle. So yeah. that could also. That's so much wisdom there that's so good she actually confirmed it or he says my family cousins do it so it's their desire yeah. so, so you got to be respectful about this by going to elders and then keep uh, praying to god about this thank you so much thank you so much pk i think this brings us to the end of the questions no if problem. you have last words for us you know you Man, I'm, pray I'm for us yeah
Absolutely. I can pray. Father, thank you so much for everybody today on this Kingdom Culture Conversation. Lord God, thank you so much, Lord, for your maid servant, your women of God, Lord God, our family. We thank you, Lord, for this incredible platform, for the word that has gone forth, for the lives that have been transitioned, the lives that have been touched, the lives that have been blessed. Oh, Father God, we pray that after salvation will come discipleship, that after salvation uh, will come a dying of the old man and will come a renewal of the new man, that after salvation will come consolidation, after salvation will come deliverance, after salvation will come ascending forth. Father God, that after salvation, Lord God, there's so much, but I pray that you would endow us with the grace, the unction, the faith necessary to do your work and to do your will. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen. I love y'all so much. Thank you so much uh, for this opportunity. I'm just so oh, grateful thank you i appreciate it so much thank you so much i know how your schedule is and so and i'm not just saying it's just top of my yeah. head i know do <laughs> this nice. so to another episode yeah. sometime later definitely definitely it's family we're family so yeah. anytime yes thank you everybody for joining us today i'll have the video on my page my feed and even on youtube as well export it to youtube so you can go there the progressive gram tv uh, and watch us. Thank you so much, BK. Enjoy the rest of the day. God bless everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.